Hey everybody, so welcome to another edition of our mini series where we're walking through and interviewing authors who have recently published books in the data space. So today we are going to be talking about personal knowledge graphs. And as a disclaimer, I did write the foreword to this book. This is not a pay promotional video. I don't get any proceeds from the book selling in any way, shape or form. I did this as a passion project uh, when I was approached to, to kind of contribute into this because if you're a fan of the channel, you'll know that I have talked about personal knowledge graphs for a while now because I truly believe they're the next fixed thing or at least the start to the next best thing and kind of a teaser of what I talk about in my forward chapter. But what we're going to talk about in this video is we're going to be interviewing uh, the two main authors who kind of came up with this concept, got all the other authors on board for writing chapters, and we're going to walk through what does this book do for you and why you might want to pick it up. There is a giveaway associated with this video. If you are interested in that, make sure you check the description down below so you can find out more details on how to split your name in. So I'm an analyst, I'm a consultant, an engineer, a founder, researcher, and writer. That's that's a mouthful and, well, it, it keeps me busy, <laughs> let's just say. It, it does keep you busy, but it, it I think, has made a, a really big impact on, on the industry. Everyone that I talk to knows both of you. Like, I don't even have to okay. say, oh, yeah, George, what's what's George's lesson? They're like, oh, no, I know George. <laughs> really, they all they all know you, you're like Cher. Like, everyone just knows you by the first name. <laughs> That's really flattering. And I think it basically speaks to the fact that everyone in the graph world, let's say, is quite well connected. That too. That too. All right, Eva, your turn. Yeah, I'm a... I'm a primarily a consultant in the areas of enterprise knowledge graphs, open knowledge graphs, and recently also personal knowledge graphs. I do trainings. And of course, I also write, uh, talk at conferences, uh, <laughs> make some research, and yeah. this kind of thing. Yeah. And um, I have caught a few of your, um, I think, presentations from conferences on YouTube. So if anybody's interested, go and check out what he has uh, over here on YouTube, because there's, there's, I think, quite a bit, actually. Um, it's all good stuff. And with that, what is a personal knowledge graph? How would you both describe it? Well, you know that there's like over 100, actually, definitions for knowledge graphs in general. Uh -huh. uh, yep. There may be even more definitions. Well, it, more or none, depending on who you ask. There, there's no such thing as like a formal definition, let's say, for personal knowledge graphs at this mm -hmm. point, which means that any different person you ask will come with, with will come up with a different definition probably i can give you mine and i can tell you how yeah. i came up with it so my definition is well it's applying graph metaphors and principles on a combination of personal knowledge management and note taking mm -hmm. uh, that's very that's a very soft touch definition and that's uh, that's you know, it's not an accident. It's mm -hmm. <laughs> it's by design. And the reason is that, well, as opposed to, let's say, enterprise knowledge graphs or open knowledge graphs that have been around for a long time and people have been using them in different ways, this is fairly new. And also it has the personal aspect to it. So you're not talking about enterprise users. You're talking about like uh, end users, actually, using mm -hmm. them in, in a very different context. So I think it's fair to have a definition that's also not as strict, let's say, or uh, formal. As, it's a very personal um, thing. So have a personal definition, right? Yeah, you can say that. <laughs> <laughs> what about you? There are definitions already in academic papers about uh, personal knowledge graphs. I um, respect them. They're, they're really nice. But uh, I, I find them a bit... Uh, one-sided and a bit restrictive. I prefer mm. to be more inclusive. So uh, my approach is just take the, the best definition of knowledge graph and apply the adjective personal. This is what I do. Mm -hmm. uh, and the one I liked is from the book that now became famous, Knowledge Graphs, with a lot of authors, you know, by um, Morgan and Claypool. And there, just by adding this adjective, it will sound like this, a graph of data intended to accumulate and convey knowledge of the world where nodes represent entities of personal interest and whose edges represent relationships between mm -hmm. these entities. Mm -hmm. And when I solved this problem, 
uh, just by, well because it's also a matter of uh, graphs we have to connect and reuse and that's what i did with this definition and i thought it, it can't be more inclusive than that mm -hmm. but then i was wrong because i heard the definition of uh, ruben verborg who said that personal knowledge graph is all data that you yourself create combined with all data that others create about you i mean <laughs> but yeah i mean i i have a whole video and i'll put it around somewhere so someone can see it uh there there's really three like categories of definition that i've come across for for pkgs and i think you both did a very good job at kind of running the gambit of all all three main types right and and it's almost like when you're talking about your own personal knowledge i think what ma made it easier for me to understand was the assets that you create when you have your own personal knowledge right what how do you you take a note you write a paper you maybe write a book you you know you have all of these different things that you create uh, you have an image um in my case one of the things that got me started in knowledge graph was um notes taken on a napkin from a professor at CMU. <laughs> These are all personal assets, right, that, that we have and that they all add up to where we are today in our knowledge and our understanding and then connecting it out, right, to, to others and how they kind of interpret those same things or maybe different things. So I think that's the, the biggest appeal in my mind to a personal knowledge graph. A few words about, about the content first. Well, it's, it's really diverse. So we cover... Yeah. Uh, PKG landscape, the trends, some historical aspects, um, considerations coming from cognitive science. There's a chapter about the role of unintended relations that we create with some philosophical implications. There is a chapter about interpersonal knowledge graphs and about managing knowledge as commons, which I think should be um, the way the web uh, should develop as a web of thought. Uh, there are three chapters uh, about using semantic technologies for personal knowledge graphs. Uh, one, two of them uh, actually showcasing actual products, and the third is a prototype. And um, there is a chapter about rethinking personal computing. So uh, having this this diversity, uh, well, first, my personal hope is that I'll be surprised what people take away from this book. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think there is um, a bit for everyone, for current users, for, for future users, for tool makers, for researchers. Um, I hope it will be inspirational and those that find things missing, they will jump in and add them in the next book or in the mm -hmm. forums. <laughs> I love that. Very PKG yeah. of you. <laughs> hmm. let, me, let me pick up then from where Ivo left off, from uh, the things uh, people may find missing in the book. Well, since it's already out for a week, uh, we have the first unofficial and a couple of official actually reviews. And, well, uh, people are already complaining, let's say, about, oh, you left out this or that or this, and, you know, I didn't find what I was expecting and so on. Mm -hmm. And my sort of standardized by now answer to that is that, well, of course, we left, I don't know, X, Y, Z out because it's so broad. Uh, like yeah. we said previously, it's this domain is like on the intersection of so many things. Yes. So, and already, uh, it was actually keeping track of how many tools, for example, exist. And I think last time we checked, there was something like 70, Ivo, if I'm correct. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So that's an astonishingly big number for such an ascent domain. So as we always say, you know, wearing my analyst hat, I would tell you that, well, this domain is definitely looking at consolidation at some point. It's mm -hmm. it's it's not viable. It's not sustainable. You can't yeah. have that many. I mean, it's it's nice to have a choice, but, uh, well, you, you also end up with a paradox of choice. So how do you choose out of 70 potential exactly. solutions? Exactly. And, and so so uh, do you have that as a resource that people could go to, to look at? Because if so, please send it so we can put it in the links below. I think I get that question more than any other, by the way. And I always, mm -hmm. funny enough, I show a slide from one of your presentations. <laughs> It's in the video that I that's talked about. That's already very old. That's already I know. Very that's old what, so if you do have something newer, please send it so I can I can put it down below so people will have access to it. Have you both heard or like what's your thought on integrating that into the other side of knowledge graph, the enterprise side? Is that is that kind of like no, these these should not mix, or you see that as a natural evolution, or like where do you think that's going to go? Well, I have 
good news and bad news. The good news is that uh, actually one of the chapters of this book, uh, which happens to be the one I co-authored uh, with uh, one of our authors, uh, Omos Baldus, actually tries to do precisely that. So it's uh, the first, uh, as far as I know, attempt to uh, define criteria for choosing your uh, the mm-hmm. the tool that su- that's suitable according to to your needs basically mm-hmm. it's by no means comprehensive we couldn't possibly include all 70 tools we did the best we could basically mm-hmm. uh but i i'd like to think that it is comprehensive in terms of well uh including all or at least as close to all potential criteria and devising mm-hmm. let's say uh, KPIs and all the things that uh, you need to do in order to analyze the domain. So that's the good news. There is something that can people can use to mm-hmm. to help them uh, too. Good. The bad news is that uh, to the other part of your question. So how do you get from how do you connect, let's say, your personal knowledge graph with another knowledge graph, a pre-existing knowledge graph that's part of the of the uh, establishment, let's say, of how people mm-hmm. use knowledge graphs. Well, things at this point are not exactly looking bright. Uh, and I'll let uh, Ifo uh, take it from there because uh, I think he's, he's tried a few things on that. The enterprise knowledge graphs is uh, just as an important motivation for me for this book in the sense that um, uh, I work with enterprise knowledge graphs. I see how difficult it is to understand what it is. Um, and the difficulty comes from the way the enterprise IT involved, the way some vendors uh, brainwash their clients mm-hmm, uh, from mm-hmm. the habit of uh, paying off a technical debt by uh, taking a new uh, one uh, and so on. So I thought, well, it's all too abstract. So if decision makers in corporations, they start using knowledge graphs for the thing that they work with and care the most, their personal data, it will be maybe easier for them to imagine how a similar way of dealing with data can work out on an enterprise level. Because so many things are done by buying a solution Mm -hmm. uh, instead of working with Knowledge Graph, which will actually dissolve the problem uh, in a nice way. Once you see it, there is no going back. And uh, so that's that, that's an important part of my, my motivation. If people really start doing them directly on an hourly basis, they would understand better. And of course, um, it uh, would be interesting at some point to see how these things uh, would integrate. Anyway, whatever we do personally, our emails and so on, in one way or another is integrated with enterprise systems, mm-hmm. not always in the best way. It could be done uh, better. Uh, but in terms of integration, I also see the same potential with the, the open web, how how uh, our personal knowledge is integrated with what happens uh, uh, outside. In, in fact, uh, we already saw certain signs uh, happening from the from the uh, web 2.0 in the sense of, well, at first the, the web was about reading, then when it, when it happened to be about writing, then we got it a bit wrong because the writing is linear. You have this flow. You do not connect f- different sources uh, in time and space. Uh, and I think if this changes, we will have a, a better situation. So Ivo, I I know you, so George kind of alluded to one of the, the chapters that he, he helped write. Maybe walk through the chapter that you wrote. Actually, you have a few, but chip, just pick one. <laughs> Yeah, I wrote two chapters uh, in that book. Uh, one was a topic I started about a year ago uh, about uh, what is a knowledge graph and uh, how I see uh, the trends, mm-hmm. uh, or more how I hope things will evolve, actually. <laughs> uh, and um, Your future uh, some aspects from 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 cognitive science a bit, uh, and uh, other a bit ethical dimension related to uh, the, the state of the web itself, because I, th- I think it's a bit worrying. Uh, and the other chapter is looking at the um, uh, Zettelkasten of Nicholas Luhmann as a personal knowledge graph. The interesting thing that I discovered are the certain uh, ways of uh, using that 
exactly the reasons that we go uh, to knowledge graphs now. And I wanted to explore those and, and ex expose them to, to. I'd like to think, uh, I'd like people to think of this book uh, not as a destination, but more of as a journey. Mm. Uh, it's a journey that we went, uh, we sailed upon, and uh, hopefully, uh, having people read the book uh, will somehow uh, give them the feeling that we had uh, during the um, 18 months or something that uh, this book uh, took uh, from conception to uh, mm -hmm. publication. Mm -hmm. So there are, you know, like ups and downs, let's say. Uh, this being an edit volume means that, um, well, uh, chapters can be different in style and uh, topics, and that's that's perfectly normal. People should be actually prepared for that mm -hmm. and there is no file and destination per se it's more of uh, well um, it's more of an opportunity for people to educate themselves on mm -hmm. what is out there mm -hmm. and explore the possibilities at least this is how i think about the book i don't have really a, a, a pitch i'm hoping that that the book will, will shift the attention um from entities to relations, from applications to data, from platform to pro protocols, ba and basically uh, the applications and data thing is also was also a bit of a dilemma, because I would prefer to to talk about uh, the graphs, not about the tools. But mm -hmm. we access our graphs through the tools, so it will not be mm -hmm. very pragmatic without mentioning what they what the, mm -hmm. their importance is. So. Um, I'm hoping to to convey somehow this idea that um, a personal knowledge graph is something that you um, you interact with, with your past and future selves, mm -hmm. but also potentially linked with also with other knowledge graphs like an interpersonal knowledge graph. Mm -hmm. It could be something that uh, knows, if not everything, a lot, mm -hmm. but unlike other things that know a lot. He's also a friend. When there is so much on the internet about a certain topic that's new, it's kind of hard to pick apart like, okay, what what pathway should I take to, to learn more about this? And I think you both have done that in the book, basically saying, okay, here are the pathways that we've selected. Now there's no how-to pathway. There's no, like you, you very concertedly said, these are, this is what the book is, is focused on. And so if folks are looking at how do I pick a path? I think this good, this is a good book to pick up. If you're looking for a how-to, just know you're going to have to probably pick a tool to then do the how-to since a lot of it goes in that space. Or you can start to just model in your own mind what what is your personal knowledge? This is very personal. So like Eva was doing tons of research, going in, you know, talking to a lot of people, and I'm sure that is a, a big chunk of his personal knowledge graph. If you're not that person, if you're the person that forgets where all your passwords are all the time, Maybe that's what your PhD looks like, right? But that's the beauty and also the complication of writing a book on this, right? Like the beauty is we all can take the the experiences that we've had so far with PKG and show like why why do we see this as, as a great new thing and where, you know, the pathways are that we felt, right, are the, the most interesting to go down. And so that's what these folks here have done is they've picked the pathways that they felt were the the most relevant to, 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 to track. And, you know, if your PKG is in a different, you know, headspace as, as the ones described in the book, you're still going to get value out of it, though, because um, it kind of gives you the survey of what others are doing too right so i mean that's that's why i i find a lot of value like there's a whole chapter on like the image piece of of knowledge and and how you you know everybody has a photo reel somewhere what does that tell you about yourself what's the metadata behind that telling and who who has access to that data the other part <laughs> right so these are all really fascinating topics all of which are covered in the book 